Hello everybody, Chris from the Karki at Blue Rhino Safaris. Um, I'm busy looking at the internet to decide what winch I would like for my vehicle. And um, I'm just going through the options, but it's, it's all a little bit too much for me. Um, what do I look at? Why do I pick a winch and how do I pick a winch? This one says an insurance policy on your 4x4 in case you get stuck. Um, recovery is the primary use. Um, if you're in an insecure location, get unstuck as quickly as possible or traveling through dry sand dunes or rainy forest for recreation. A winch doesn't work in dry sand dunes, just by the way. Um, winches can be extremely dangerous when used incorrectly. Yes, um, it's a worn winch. I've heard the name before. Take a lot has one for 8,000 Rand, but it's a two ton winch. Um, but it's not a brand that I know, so I'm not too sure. Here's one 9.5 extreme performance, 9,500 pounds pulling strength, longest duty cycle, and the fastest line speed. 9.5 XP features high output series wound motor. It's got some specs here, uh, recommended battery 650 cold crank amps for a minimum for the winch, um, chrome with high gloss, dark gray powder coat finish. And if I look at these things, it, it is quite daunting to figure out what I actually need. Because if they talk about how shiny something is, then why am I buying this thing? Am I buying it as a functional piece of equipment? or because it looks nice, or because it's fast, or because what? So let's talk about the basics of winches uh, for now. If you buy a winch, then these are all the components that you'll probably see on, on the table. And firstly, your winch itself is this center section consisting of three main portions. On the left, you have a 12 volt electrical motor this motor can run forwards and backwards and it drives through a thin shaft all the way through the spindle to the other side it drives a planetary gearbox this little planetary gearbox has engaged this engage lever on the side so that it can free spool or not and the output of that little gearbox drives the spindle uh, in this case the spindle has a synthetic rope on it uh, which just means it's not steel, it's a synthetic rope. And on top of this motor, you see the solenoid controller. Um, to swap your current um, in the two directions that you need for in and out, the system uses a series of solenoids that uh, engages in various different ways to ensure that the motor runs in both directions. Then on the front left you have the cable override with the in-out switch on your handset. And then you have a remote control as well, which is nice on the newer versions of winches. Uh, so that you can stand far away and with remote control um, go in and out on the winch. Uh, then you have the fair lead, which is the silver plate on the right hand side. Uh, that could be a set of rollers, it could just be a plate like this. It's there basically to prevent the cable from cutting when it uh, goes in and out of the winch itself. In this case you can see 12,500 pounds. So it's a 12,500 pounds winch which roughly gives you a 6 ton winch. So the first thing that you have to remember is that the cable is layered on the spindle. Here you can see the first layer right on top of the spindle and then the second layer going on top of that one. And here the third layer is already applied and ultimately there will be four layers on top of the spindle. So what this means in practical terms is that your six ton rated winch that you saw just now is only rated six tons on the spindle itself. That is where all ratings are measured. Um, if you do the calculations and you take the 65 millimeter spool with the eight millimeter cable, 
you work out the torque it's roughly 2000 newton meter torque on this winch and then if you start checking the power available or the force available on the different layers of wire you have a different picture of what your winch is actually capable of so if the wires are only if you're working on the the base just on the spindle then you have a six ton winch but if your cable is wound up to such an extent that you're in the green layer then you drop down to a 5000 uh, kilogram capacity if it's wound up even more it's down to 4.1 tons and if you're on the fourth layer which is typical for all winches you're down to 3.5 tons so your winch changes its available force uh, as you have layers of wire winding up so the fourth layer which is the one when you get stuck in the marami and there's a tree there and you pull out five meters of wire and you hook it around the tree that fourth layer will only give you three and a half tons if you then push the button and nothing happens it is because your six ton winch suddenly has become a three and a half ton winch and that is in practical terms the biggest problem most people have when they use the winch they only pull it out a little bit and they hook it and the winch is just not winch is just not strong enough to to do the job there's ways to fix it you you ultimately can just wind out all the cable and um, and make sure that you're down onto the spindle itself and then you have the full capacity otherwise you're gonna have to use a trick or two but that is the the practical implication of the sizing of a winch so when you are deciding on the size of winch that you need what you will have to do is calculate basically what you have available as far as the power of the winch goes don't just take the 9500 pounds that's printed on the box as gospel you have to calculate your different layers of wire and if you look at the example of the four ton winch which is the very standard size winch then you need to see that your vehicle fits in somewhere in that equation now what I would suggest is that you take your vehicle fully loaded the weight of that and for a standard Hilux it would probably be about two and a half tons fully loaded and you need to look at the uh, at the numbers and see where will I fit in with a two and a half ton vehicle if I have equal forces of the vehicle um, versus the the winching capacity then you should be all right as a rough guideline however if you are stuck in mud and you're sucked down then you are also working against the vacuum of the mud sucking the vehicle down which means you need more power than just the weight of the vehicle so what you would need to do is look at the the breakdown of the different forces at the different uh, levels of the rope and understand where your vehicle fits in to that picture um, if the vehicle the normal loaded weight is round about the blue level which means you've run out about 15 meters of cable and you operate between 10 and 10 and 18 somewhere there meters of cable then you will be in that layer and 2700 kilos if I had a fully loaded Hilux that would probably be good enough if you had a fully loaded Land Cruiser uh, and you're sitting at three and a half tons then this winch is not going to be good enough you'll have to have a few tricks um, to to get it to work properly and that's how you would basically decide on the size uh, exactly in, in this fashion I hope this helps um, if you have any questions or you want me to calculate numbers for you then please just email it through to me I'll get back to you with a few numbers and I can confirm for you if what the numbers are or if someone is busy uh, giving you a story that um, that might just be a sales pitch. Otherwise, winch safe. Cheers.